<sighs> wonder what stupidity of racism made by white people will be seeing now. <laughs> uh, shit hurts my fucking ears. Uh, is my very nature that of the devil? Is my penis the pixie straw from which Lestat drinks my divine niggardly icker? <laughs> God. <laughs> Starting off fresh! There's a column in here about the history of this lovely square. The Louisiana Purchase was signed to Pennywise, Funk, Foolish. <laughs> Say anything about how they used to take runaway slaves, cut the heads off, and pike them on the iron gates as a warning? Wow, you're a ray of sunshine. <laughs> I'm only halfway through that scene. Do you ever think that we, that's to say our kind, we'll put on earth for a larger purpose what larger purpose could you possibly fucking serve you suck blood for a living that's basically it i desire blood as much as you do but i wonder should we be more selective define your terms the worst of them and how would we go about determining that you can literally read them. lose our power thank you yes you can literally read their minds Read their minds. Hunting is pure instinct. And a part of your instinct should be using your fucking powers as a vampire. The ones you admire. The poets, composers. Shouldn't we spare them the randomness of our killing? Every one of them is capable of abomination. Oh my god, get the fuck out of here with your moon night justifications. <laughs> Music. That was where Lestat separated man from food. Just gotta hold it in. Only another mile. He's just a drunk. Eighteen dollars in a dress. She ain't never gonna miss it. Stealing from his mother for a new suit. Petty Larson. Oh, these stupid people. Everybody's so stupid. Him. Yeah, the white one. <laughs> Eat before your reason or his heart fails us. <laughs> no, bro, I... Listen, listen, I know you're black and I know you like to eat the pussy, but that's not what this is. <laughs> black pussy. <laughs> it's a very swell All the high browns will be there. I feel like this is a racial statement. All the high browns will be there? All the high browns like Kanye and P. Diddy. <laughs> that's not what I meant, though. I meant like black band and a white headlining woman. You're ashamed of what we are. I'm ashamed of what you both Maybe are. <laughs> I am enjoying the fact I get to make racial jokes with absolutely no abandon. Well, a, lot, a little bit of abandon. I don't want your channel banned. Yes, for every 20 people he kills, he makes one small businessman's dreams come true. Louis de Pontelac, the Dark Prince of Iberville. It's a pretty good title to have. The Dark Prince of Iberville. All you literally need is have somebody make a vaudeville track of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme and just run that shit the fuck back. It'll be perfect. In West Iberville, border race. Dare I say it, this episode is slightly better than the last one, so far. So far. <laughs> Damn, what the fuck? Carl done left. He done left my black ass. Did you say something else or just leaving the room? Yeah, I said this episode so far is better than the last two. Only because it's eight, six minutes and 14 seconds in. <laughs> it hasn't pissed us off that much yet. It'll get, give it time, it'll get there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Martin, you have played the same melody the very same way for two weeks now. People didn't come here to hear you jabber, Mr. Lion Court. <laughs> well, they didn't come here to hear you play either. Otherwise, you'd be in a concert hall and there'd be fewer prostitutes. <laughs> oh, no. Why'd you have to go and get fucked up by the quirked up white boy with autism? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sad part is that it's true. It's out over music like nobody I've ever seen but autistic people. Oh, hell no! <laughs> I need a hood rat, bitch, you! They're gonna rename this place the Magic Johnson Saloon. <laughs> hey, yo, play niggas in Paris! <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> More importantly, the look. 
this guy just giving. I was out niggered. I'll never be out niggered again. 2022. It was a cold winter that year. And Lestat was my coal fire. He was my coal fire and I was his coal lover. It's the abused abuser psychological relationship I'm talking about. I do not consider myself abused. Well, it doesn't matter what you consider. <laughs> 50 years later, you talk like he was your soulmate. Like, like, like you were locked in some fucked up gothic romance. This is the lampshading I was talking about. Mm -hmm. This is a lot more direct in their quote because they have a lot more writing on this. Ain't nobody going to give a shit about She-Hulk, but interviewing a vampire. Hmm. Every rewrite's going to be scrutinized. So the lampshading is supposed to be a tactic to take away ammunition from a critic. But the problem is, is that the ammunition's still fucking there. Mm -hmm. Saying, well, they're saying they're criticizing it themselves is not a criticism. And it's not a deflection of criticism. Because you wouldn't do, you would just write a better fucking story. Yeah. I am in my Buick staring in the rear view mirror at my daughter in the car seat. An hour after I gave Derek, a guy I don't know, the last 30 bucks I had. My editor reminds me it's seven years before car seats are mandatory. My ex-wife reminds me I never owned a Buick. This is the odyssey of recollection. Uh, yeah, you can't really use that uh, against him considering he's a former drug addict and a human being. Your brain can't deteriorate, motherfucker. His can. The fact that you can't remember shit well doesn't make any sense. Half a century later, allow me my odyssey allow me my odyssey let me be right nigga let me be right <laughs> let me be out you fucking dry out jew how dare you <laughs> you dry out jew mm, why I would you throw them away yeah really i would have kept that shit brown and back so here's the problems with this idea where you're having like, them deliver cats and rats to your home nigga you are in louisiana have them deliver chickens chickens and the fuck else y'all eat out there alligators chickens, catfish <laughs> mud skippers crawfish lots of seafood cuisine not to mention different forms of gumbo yeah and that's like that's the thing he ate chickens in the film so i'm thinking why not just eat chicken well he ate rats too to be fair but they had an excuse for the rats uh in the mo movie because that was during the plague and like there was an excuse because they were everywhere now it's just not really an excuse because yeah like you said just order some chickens there's so many different kinds of livestock and different kinds of blood rich meat you would have the ability to get like you go out with the butcher have him arrange for the livestock to be sent to your home so it can be prepared by your own butcher i'm air quoting that as you're going to kill the pig to serve the meat for dinner drain it of its blood mm -hmm. and then serve the meat drain the pig and drink the hog just like you drink lestat's hog what do the employees at the azalea say about louis and lestat i'll answer with a question are there two beds upstairs or one you are trying to die in a way that doesn't make sense for your character especially if you know you work at a place where they have such distinct levels of secrecy also why are you allowing only one type of singer to be in your place at night there would be a string of singers a string of performers that would come to your part of the city to perform at your club this woman would be hanging around specifically to fuck him so why wouldn't they already be fucking he doesn't have a problem having sex with women this 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 power of them to try and basically insert homophobia everywhere in the script. Getting on my nerve. I like all sorts. I like soft hands. I like burnished complexions. <laughs> <laughs> I like vanilla and I like chocolates. I like, uh, <laughs> I like silver and I like bronze. <laughs> I'm hungry. I think I'm gonna get something to eat. Is the animal market still open? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta rub it in some more? Get your wick dipped? <laughs> you gonna mock me for my food choices? What the hell? So you didn't kill her. She has talents. Like sucking my cock. <laughs> Aren't I enough? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking f it. <laughs> oh, God, that is the best reaction to get out of this show yet. Oh, Louie, you little bitch. <laughs> oh, God. Don't laugh. No. 
Uh, <laughs> his little jog. I can smell her on you. How oh, yeah, you have that French vanilla whore still on your tongue. <laughs> and then you make this nigga taste it. <laughs> I'll give you a sample of her pussy, Louis. <laughs> so I can fuck whoever I want. Of course. 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 You said, of course, way too many times, bro. <laughs> you diddled the man's money. He bought himself an end around. It's pure capitalism, Mr. Capitalism. Mr. Finn Wick, I do say that exceptional nigga done butt fucked you legally. <laughs> no security guard in the door. That's a woman count as coin. No offense, Miss Williams. Been called a cunny, a cow, and a bitch that ate a thousand dicks. You want to apologize for calling me a woman? <laughs> Ooh, leave your wife. I'll make you a happy man, Mr. Anderson. Yes, Mr. Anderson. I will suck the skin off your <laughs> <laughs> I will suck that mustache right off your face. Oh, this gender from the ship making my pussy warm, sir. <laughs> 400 men over at charity getting treatment for the clap. I got pristine pussies walking my floor. Now I'm offended. <laughs> Christine pussies walking my flow, spit shining them motherfuckers. Antiseptic they ass pussy. They glisten <laughs> like fucking marble, sir. You can eat off them. <laughs> and just you pump your semen directly into the vagina and spit it out and give you. Yeah, all right, I think we need to move on from this. <laughs> we're done. You started it. Who's I remember? <laughs> you were listening. Oh. So the problem with this is that, um, and I do mean this in the most historical way possible. Niggas didn't get choices about enlisting. <laughs> so how did he avoid the draft? He probably ran somewhere. I don't know. And nobody decided to come and take the very well-established bank-assisted Negro during the heights of the beginnings of Jim Crow and racism. Not too <laughs> far away from the, establish the, the establishment of the Ku Klux Klan. Nobody came to say, let's take that Negro down a notch. Clearly these writers are very well-versed on racism. <laughs> You think this is nice? Wait till you see my pretty automobile. Wait till you see my dick. <laughs> Wait till you see my dick. <laughs> Nothing much change here, I see. Oh, I see. Now begins the homoerotic scene. So what we're going to do is the same thing we've been seeing people criticized for, even in modern projects like Riverdale, which is having gay sex in the woods. <laughs> I don't know why this is a trope that you guys write into your shows, but could you stop? <laughs> What, you can't get wood unless you're around a lot of wood. <laughs> well, most of why I signed up is I kept hearing something about something they call European sensibilities. <laughs> okay, that's what you look like. Uh, who you looking at? See, it would matter more about that last line for the purposes of, hey, we don't want no black men looking at our white women and more like, we don't want them black men looking at other black men viciously with eyes <laughs> hungry like the wolf. But you know, tomato, 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 tomato. Also very interesting that you just told us these two men experimented in homosexuality in their youth. Uh, <laughs> historical check on that, please. <laughs> in Asia days since I seen you last. That's the moonlight line, that's all. Good fit. This uh, uniform. Oh, it's the moonlight. Yeah, the moonlight. Dancing off my flannels and shit. What the fuck you talking about, nigga? He's so booty drunk, he doesn't even know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> He's so fucking wild this time. <laughs> it would have been way more sense if you were taking the fucking shirt off and been like, good fit, you use uniform. That's just the moonlight lying to you. Well, let me see the truth. Rip! <laughs> oh, I can't, that's even gayer. <laughs> mm, nigga, you smell like pole boys and cigarettes. It's just the moonlight lying on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You're never going to let that catchphrase go, are you? <laughs> no! <laughs> I didn't invent these lines! <sighs> oh, please, not! don't accentuate the sucking noises. The only sucking noises I want accentuated are on someone's neck when someone's sucking blood, all right? Oh, he's sucking blood, all right. <laughs> Also, how does he not look up at him biting his arm and be like, man, what you doing? <laughs> I mean, I know I didn't practice on all my fucking squad mates, but damn, I didn't know it was that. I'm trying to symbolize to you that you're using too much teeth, nigga. Slow down. <laughs> I was going to go see Grace and the kids. Let's fuck appearances. 
Yeah, like, I don't understand why they invited him back uh, after almost eating their baby and then leaving it on the floor. And we don't even know if they didn't know that that was what he did. All they could fucking know is that the baby was crying and he was gone. At which point, you've had conversations since then, either by telegraph or mail or in person, where you just never explained why you left your nephew and or niece on the floor crying. Like, oh yeah, I had to, I had to take you off immediately and I... I guess the baby got onto the floor, Grace. I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize. I should have put them back in the crib. <laughs> what the, the, how did she just sweep that under the fucking rug? Also, does her does she and her husband not know the definition of pulling out and swallowing? Those were the old days, Carl. Those were the old days. W- women old didn't days. get their protein like they should have back then. <laughs> Many streets in New Orleans weren't paved at the time. The mud on his boots could have come from anywhere. Was it raining that night? I got some. But yeah, that's stupid though. You fucked in the rain. <laughs> You're lingering, Rashid. Apologies, Mr. Dulac. I want to listen to your interesting stories of how you got fucked and then butt fucked a man <laughs> by you. <laughs> it was ravishing and riveting, sir. I apologize. I will let you return to your thacky tales with the uh Ashy Jew. <laughs> the Ashy Jew. <laughs> What's going on out here? Go back inside, son. Son, I'm your son. Let me handle this, Mama Dulac. Like, let me handle this, Mama Dulac. <laughs> Motherfucker, you married into the family. He brought <laughs> gifts for your children. Don't get your ass beat the fuck down now. I mean, keep in mind, dude abandoned the baby on the floor. And then True, they really disa- disappeared for six months and then suddenly comes back. I mean, uh, they could have bonded while he was, you know, gone. Sucking Lestat cock. It, it made sense for him to go closer to the family in his absence to fill the void left after his brother is dead and he's just missing. But the problem is that you can't say he's not attentive because he does check in. So it's weird because if you don't show the conversation literally the night afterwards where Grace tries to explain there's something different about my brother and you sit there saying all the shit that would have made sense to come out of Paul's mouth, it would not make sense unless you show that scene where it's him yelling at him saying, you disappear and I'd have to take up and be a new child. <laughs> you are disrespectful to your mama. You, you, you haven't, what, this is just literally fucking dramas for the sake of drama. And yep. it doesn't make sense. It's, just, it's completely out of the fucking blue. You yeah, would tr- have the ability to have a conversation about this. Yeah, true. They didn't develop this shit at all. I feel like something big is going to happen. He's going to get thrown the fuck out and that's the last we're going to see of his family because it just needs to happen for this episode. They're rushing it. Like The only way that it would make sense for you to be like, and I never saw my family again at that point is either they disowned me or I decided to pretend that I was dead or I killed them all or I just simply allowed them to believe that I had been lost. Something that had to do with you forging documents and something else that had to do with your businesses. But it wouldn't have mattered because they know that you work in town and they know that you own the places. And even then, you own the house they live in. So unless you were to be like, I'm going to give great ownership of everything, mama. I'm sorry I couldn't be a better son for you. I'm sorry that my my actions led to Paul's death. Even though I'm not responsible, I could have been a better son. I'm just different now. I love white dick. <laughs> <laughs> Get the girl house to paint the girl house! Oh, damn. You fucking idiot. (laughs) Oh, God. Now you have to get it repaired. (laughs) It's like, oh, my God. He's a monster. He's just like that Lestat fella. But it's like, no. Y'all niggas can literally just talk to him. There's no reason for you to act this fucking abrasive. But I tell y'all. What I tell y'all? Yeah, what did you tell him? It would be nice to have seen that. I'm about to get a train ran through me. <laughs> what? Miss Bricktop wanted you to have this. I think she's on to us. With ordinance 4118 of the city of New Orleans, the establishment is deemed closed until further notice in keeping with the laws established in the city ordinance 4118, put into effect on March 1st, 1917. Also, why is your ear bleeding? I mean, that's a lot of a power he has to use to do that, so. What can I say? I'm a lot. I'm not perfect. I knew you were there. You jealous? Yes. I don't like sharing. Then why did you do <laughs> <him>? <laughs> like, 
it's how every woman says that her and her husband should have a polyamorous relationship. She really means just for her. <laughs> we are establishing that Lestat is indeed the bitch. Yes. <laughs> he did me some face and I drove him home. I heard your heart standing! You watch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Calm down. Yeah, like, all right, this guy's performance is fine, but then he he does these sudden outbursts, and then it's like, oh, come on, dude, it's just not, dial dial it not, back. It's not like it's even homosexual outrage from his emotions being mixed with his denial of humanity and basic concepts. It's like he's just just directed and told act over emotional. See, mm -hmm. literally reads the stat says angrily <laughs> <laughs> this is not a life that's because you took my life i lost everything i lost my brother i lost my family suddenly you didn't, didn't take your family you lost your family he might have incited the loss of your brother mm -hmm. he's not responsible that either that's just unfortunate happenstance you act like you have no agency oh at all gosh. like you have no responsibility in any of this yeah it's like playing the racism angle of well now they're gonna take the last thing i care about as though you did not care about the fact that he preyed on upon you and made you into a vampire so that you could be with him forever as per the story that you are currently trying to do a retelling multi-season parter of and then you stick in the racism element like and then i outdid these niggas in selling pussy and dick and now they're gonna take my ostrich from me <laughs> i gotta drink over this like a black man finn o'shea a man who used to work for me Got a dirty house across the street. City ain't shut off his lights. Mmm, this tedious Negro. Still clinging to his Creole heritage like a life raft. We're all. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are giving me way too fucking much ammunition. <laughs> we had the exception, Negro. Now we got the tedious Negro. Then we're gonna have a hungry Negro. <laughs> then we're gonna have a stanky leg Negro. When your mother sees the devil in your eyes, it's a hard assessment to abandon. Am I from the devil? Is my very nature that of the devil? Are my balls crafted in black charcoal burn? Brimstone, iron, and sulfur. Semen brimming with... All right, Carl. <laughs> Let's get to the point. <laughs> Jesus. I was, I was one word away from the end of my sentence, goddammit. <laughs> I don't like when they do this. I uh, hate that they keep doing that. I know. I hate it too. You have your investments on the Claiborne Avenue. Hats, little grocery stores, nickels, dimes, quarters. So it is about the money. It's not about the money. It's about the black swagger. <laughs> the exaggerated black swagger of a vampire. Broken, what broken windows? <laughs> so, like, the problem with that is that back in those days, at least when it came to colored businesses and them having a good standing front, when you do things like this, there are white people that have to look the other way to allow it. Mm -hmm. And if the aldermen's are all part of racism, then it means that you're telling a very different story than what you're expecting us to believe. And the fact that you're also doing this because he is a black business owner, but very clearly has a white confidant who is important in the money. It would be his business you're incurring apart, and then he'd get to fuck you over because you could just say that he is the proprietary business operator, mm -hmm. not the owner operator so then he would be able to get fucked by the white man and then drained by the black man <laughs> oh you fuckers are stupid about your racism stories take a black man in america make him a vampire fuck with that vampire and see what comes of it oh they stop with this fucking logic it doesn't make black people look good you remember that meme where they said that black people were gonna get superpowers on like a particular date this year or last year, and it's like, oh man, I don't know exactly, but I do with your superpower. You're making it sound like if we were all vampires, we would just take our abilities and use our vampiric nature to start predating ourselves upon you and subvert the entire nature of slave and enslaved. I don't yeah, like we just, that. We just start being evil because we have power. Like, what kind of shit is that? 
Is that supposed to be flattering? I mean, outside the fact that Popeyes would be the first joint in which all vampires would congregate around, <laughs> nothing would really change. <laughs> Wait a minute. How, why they, they, like, even if they can't eat there, they would still congregate near Popeyes? <laughs> because it would be like the vampires, they'd be the vampiristic world star. Uh-huh. Down for me to have a good, nice, long, stiff drink after day. Oh my God, a nigga. <laughs> Now, come on, nigga boy. You wouldn't hurt Captain Kangaroo, would you? <laughs> I would have said Captain Crunch. <laughs> Whichever. He looks like both of them motherfuckers. Whack. But you're a tiny man flying too close to the sun. And that's what I am, Louie. The sun. Get it? Cause you a vampire and you turn into a bucket of fried chicken when you near the sun, little nigga boy. <laughs> ah! 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 What a very shitty fucking. It's <laughs> <laughs> a terrible ear too. <laughs> what are you? An exceptional nigga. <laughs> I'm a vampire. Oh, oh, yeah, that's no. that's corny. I didn't do it for me. I did it for my city, my people. Whack, destroy our businesses, and buy the land for cheap. I know what they're doing. So remember when I made that reference before about Black Wall Street? Uh -huh. um, that didn't happen is in Louisiana. Yes, they fucked people out of the property, but mostly what they did was that they just killed the black men, and then they took the land for themselves after they bought it from each other for pennies at auction. And of course, it was already prearranged who would go to. It was, the auction was for show. Mm -hmm. But they would not just show up at his business and throw fucking wine bottles and fucking makeshift Molotov cocktails to say, fuck this nigga business. That's not. <laughs> no, the racist, the, the play about racism doesn't work if they just are outwardly racist for no reason. And you're asserting that all of the other seven, of all the other 17 out of 16 aldermen left on the chapter all just Ku Klux Klanish. That's like, no. And also, why would you burn down a building that you're going to fucking need to sell? <laughs> why would you do that? Don't you need that property? You're so fucking dumb. Ugh. Companion of the dark gift. Finally, we should make this our anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little too game for me. <laughs> I stumbled through the streets like an irrational child who had tested his strength on a small bird and now asked, can I make it whole again? All you had to do was kill the dude and bury him somewhere. No one asked you to do that fucking art display. More importantly, why would the action of one person killed be representative of the rest of the whole of the public when it would be very clear that the culprit would be you and you would be prone to and non grata and nobody else in the ville would have a problem with it since they specifically want your dumbass. Your building would get burned down. Your business would be fucked with. Not everyone else. And if they were to do that, then it would be that they were racist, evil people all the time. And they were waiting for an excuse to begin with anyways. But then that would mean that all you would have to do is then buy that part of the bill with Louis' money, build it back up again, and then one by one, each of you kill all the racist aldermen and replace them with pawn of standing black men and women. Oh no, he's gonna find Claudia in this mess. No! I could not save Storyville, but I could save her. My light. My Claudia. My redemption. My nigga. <laughs> my jumpy did. <laughs> Good. Oh. Episode three. This is all about vampire identity. No, the fucking. <laughs> Uh, which are Keith Oberman looking ass. <laughs> Storyville's beginning to crumble. Maybe I am a vampire. And here is a person who has decided to fuck with me directly. And I'm going to take it all out on him. Technically, you should take it all out on Tom and then him. He's the one that sold you the shit. He's the one that set you up with a pig and a poke because you weren't being an exceptional negro. A little bit like Lestat in the church, he lets these predatory instincts get the way better of him. He is in a mania when that is happening. No, the fuck he wasn't. Yeah, no, he was. Yeah, he was calm as shit, methodical. I let you reload. A little bit like Lestat in the church. Lestat in the church. 
have made it when he says, I'm going to let you reload. Because <laughs> when, when I'm attacking a person, when I'm stabbing them in the knife in the front end, I say, I'm going to give you some time to run. And I come up whistling Dixie like, shake. <laughs> what part of that was <laughs> this type of shit is just to gaslight people who just watched the episode reiterate what's on screen but also gaslight certain details so you can like fill in the blanks of their shitty writing later and if the club is the last thing that he had the last bit of humanity and that's about to be taken away from him who is he? The club was his last bit of humanity when he was him selling whores. <laughs> is this it was a part of his humanity, not his fucking family? Does that make any sense? Y'all really want me to believe that this upstanding and exceptional Negro was only remaining slightly more refined in his actions because he was selling and eating and buying and trading in pussy prawns and cards. <laughs> Which means he put his business, his business is more important and more close to his heart than his fucking family. Bravo. <laughs> what a wonderful way to say that the black man cares about money and pussy more than family. <laughs> you said I'm arrogant? Uh, also, he delivered that line really badly. Yes. <laughs> we. That's such a shitty way to jump over a fire. <laughs> And you know he had to rehearse that multiple times so he could get the fucking jump just right. It's <laughs> like he's jumping to a camera, guys. <laughs> like there's a mount, there's a camera position. They have to deuce up the flames like a fucking gas oil girl. Act. They gotta get the jump just right, and then like good set for like 15 takes. Go, 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 go. And this thing's. <laughs> 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 Gotta get the jump to come into frame with the camera so it zooms in on his face and his eyes and his expression. That is not the look of a man who's supposed to be determined to save a woman. That is the look of an actor who's like, my leg hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I just twisted my ankle, god damn. <laughs> Somebody give me an ice pack. I rolled my knee. <laughs> then, then, because you niggas don't know how to cut on an actual blank take, you have to stand there. <laughs> you have to stand there awkwardly yeah, and just like readjust yourself audio. so that you're in the center of the frame. Literally, yeah, you can yeah. see the, oh. the frustration on his face as he has to focus in as he lands on his knee. <laughs> <laughs> and like for a half second, the fucking frame makes him have to stop, readjust, center to the screen, <laughs> play black. Look at it. Damn, Carl, calm down! <laughs> oh, you don't know, be ashamed. <laughs> this series started off funny, but it's getting real dark real fast. <laughs> it was a slightly better episode than the other two, but like, it's, yeah, it's still trash. All right. I don't know if I play video games until I pass out. <laughs>